We're going to have a look at the new Mavic Pro DJI Go app version 4.1 with some new photo and video choices. We're going to leave the style settings in their default positions, uh, saturation, sharpness, etc., contrast, and have a look at the video. We're going to use D-Cine like video as the uh, standard setting. First of all, I'll have a look at D-Log. It's the least processed of the video forms. It looks rather flat on display and requires a significant amount of post-processing. Next up is the Nun, and actually the Nun has fairly high saturation, so it is processed as well, so it's a bit of a misleading name. You can see how much uh, more contrast it has too than decine like Third up is True Color. True Color is much like Nun, and it has higher saturations, and uh, a little bit more vivid would be the choice that I think you'd see in a normal photo. There are a number of filters, I'll call them, instead of uh, film modes in the uh, that you can select. They uh, are highly processed and the only one I personally think might be interesting is this one which is the Film B. It's really a black and white version but again you can pull color out in post-processing quite easily so I'm not even sure if I'd want to do that. All of them highly process the initial image, sometimes saturating out in this one here like the warms and greens which is a bit of a, a cinema look for a lot of cityscapes right now which again can be have higher degrees of control on that in uh, video software. And then there are a number of, they just call film D, film E, F, G, H, and I, which um, boost certain aspects of the color and contrast. This is probably the least processed looking film E, but with so many similar or um, better looking controls in the uh, cine like and true color, I'm not sure why you'd want to go to these uh, film ones right off the bat. The other thing about them is that they will preserve the video in this form so that <clears throat> makes it very difficult later to do any type of post-processing. At least if you start in D-Cine like, then you can add these filters in uh, a lot of conventional video software later. But. If you're just taking a video on the fly, literally, and posting it to Facebook or something else and you have no time to do any post-processing and you want a, a funky look, uh, you're definitely going to get it with these uh, film filter effects on the video. So let's have a look at the photos now and see um, what kind of choices we have. We're going to just choose auto white balance and exposure, auto exposure, just like you do if you're just ready to fly. If we compare that to the sunny white balance choice and we keep ISO at 100 and the exposure the same, you'd probably even notice the sweep across the screen. If we glow with the uh, cloudy white balance, you see how much it warms it up. On a cloudy day, it'll warm up the bluishness significantly. Not a bad choice. There's also an incandescent mode and a fluorescent mode before we get to the custom settings, which um, are good for indoor lighting. Obviously, we don't have that outside here. Custom allows us to change the exposure values. If we go with a minus two exposure value, eight thousandths of a second, you see that uh, essentially we're only uh, exposing for the highest highlights here, the sky. Not a bad way to go if you were really wanting to get the clouds, but uh, you're gonna have to do a lot of pulling up the shadows later. But it's fairly forgiving, and in fact, the uh, minus 0.3 exposure value is, is a pretty good picture and really uh, protects the highlights as well as giving you lots of shadow to work with still. So it's not a bad compromise. If we start going above zero, to plus three, <clears throat> you start to see it brightening up here. And what we're trying to do is, is pull the um, speed down of the shutter setting so we get a more fluid flowing effect in video. Cost of that, of course, is brightness. We start to lose the highlights. Here now, plus one, we're starting to really wash that sky out. In fact, even the shadow detail is starting to get a little bit washed out. Get to 1.3, we're only down at 106, 640th of a second, but um, uh, it's almost unusable at this point here. And then finally, at a plus two, one three three hundred and twentieths of a second, almost an unusable picture. If you darken that down, you really won't be getting anything back from the highlights. So the only solution to that really is to use neutral density filters. They can darken down the uh, scene. Um, they have to be put on quite carefully onto the gimbal so you don't damage them. But they can pull down the the speed to get a more of a cinegraphic effect on the the uh, video. If you want to use the video for uh, photos, then uh, leave it off and go for the higher shutter speeds. So in summary on the video, the default settings actually work pretty good. I think all of them would be quite satisfactory for you. Uh, 
with the uh, Decini, like personally, is the one I think has the best balance between saturations, uh, highs and lows, and uh, color. But um, they all work pretty well, except for D-Log. Again, you have to do post-processing on that one. But in general, the default settings for the Mavic are pretty good. Uh, if you want to pull photos from the video, you should go with the higher shutter speed. Other than that, you should go with the lower one. And going with the slightly negative uh, EV value, which can be done right off the transmitter on the uh, right-hand button, is a great way to quickly adjust the exposure on the fly. Thanks for watching.